What's going on everybody? Boris here at the Ecology Design Studio. After a long pause, we're finally back with fresh new content and I think you're going to love it. I've got a lot of content coming your way. We'll continue where we left off in our previous series and introduce new concepts, designs, tools, methods, and so much more. I'm pretty excited about what I have in store for you guys. But for now, let's jump right in. This video is all about tools tools that we will use to create Java-based applications. In this episode, I will show you where and how to get these tools free, legally of course, and in the next, I will walk you through configuring these tools so they work to our advantage. The goal here is to create a development environment where we can seamlessly use professional-grade tools and practices. We're going to use this environment to explore concepts in computer science, develop algorithms, and create web-based applications. So here are the tools that we will use throughout our upcoming tutorials. JetBrains IntelliJ, Oracle WebLogic and Oracle SQL Developer, Git for Windows, and GitHub, and Maven. Optional tools are NetBeans and Eclipse. Most of this software is available for free. The rest of it is free with a student email account, one ending in .edu. If you don't have one, not to worry, there are many ways to get one. I highly recommend you sign up for a course at a local institution. For a few hundred dollars, you can learn new skills and have access to academic resources of all sorts. I'll cover this in more detail in our professional development series, uh, but suffice it to say there are other ways you can get an educational email account. I'm not going to cover them here, but I'm sure you can figure it out on the web. Let me tell you a little bit about these tools. Here we have IntelliJ. It is an IDE, an integrated development environment. Here's where we're going to write our code, compile our application, build it, and then post it to our web server, which brings me to my next point, WebLogic. We're going to install WebLogic, which is a server on which we're going to deploy our packaged application. The next is SQL Developer. We're not going to work with databases just yet. That's coming up in the future. But this tool we can use to create models or to query databases. And of course, Git for Windows and GitHub. This is a bit interesting and a bit new. Previously, we've been using NetBeans to write applications and, and output them to the command line and basically save them as files on a local machine. What we're going to introduce now is the concept of versioning. We're going to have a version history so that if we mess up, we can always revert to a previous version or we can share our project with others or invite others to contribute to that project so they can add files and we can simultaneously work on an application. Git is something you download and install locally to your machine. GitHub is the website where you can share your repository with others. And you can also make changes and contribute here as well. And we'll cover this concept in more details later. Maven, I'm going to cover Maven in a separate video. For now, suffice it to say that it is a build tool. It's a process through which we can build a Java application. And there's many different ways we can do this. There is Ant, Apache Ant, there is Apache Maven, there is Gradle, and there's a few others. There's tons of ways we can build our application. I've chosen Maven because of dependency management, and it does a lot of things automatically for you. Let's go back to IntelliJ IDEA and see how we can get this uh, application. This is not an uh, open source or free uh, integrated development environment. This we have to apply for this and um, as you can see here all you need to apply is to be a student and have access to your student email address or a valid ISIC card. I'm not sure what an ISIC card is. I did have a .edu email so I use this. And you can apply now and then download the tool. Once you download it, once you download it and then initialize it, you're going to see this screen but first, let me tell you about how to register this tool. So you're going to sign up with your educational email. And then, of course, they're going to ask you to confirm it. And then once you confirm your email, you'll have three different options. One will be to enter a license key. 
Uh, another one is something else. And then the third one is to register using a JetBrains account. Register with your account using your email, student email as your username. And then it'll automatically activate the ID for you. Right then. So we want to come here to the second tab and we have JetBrains IDE support. It's a browser plugin for Chrome. There should be one for Firefox. I'm not sure, I'll have to check. This adds even more value to the already powerful IDE that we have with IntelliJ because we can edit HTML, CSS, cascading style sheets, and JavaScript live and then see the changes take place before it. There are some videos you can watch and read about this plugin, but it will just integrate our environment, development environment even further. Let's talk about our web logic server. Down the road, this is going to handle a lot of things for us. It's going to help us out with session management and user authentication, passing users' credentials. For now though, what we're going to do is use our IDE to package our web-based application into something called a WAR file. And you can think of this as a zip. Basically, we're going to throw all of the files that our application needs and depends on in the structure that we create for it, right? All the directories in the right place, all the files in the right place, everything compiled properly. And then we're going to deploy it on this server where people can access the application, the front end, front end of the application through a URL. So when they hit the URL, the server, the web server will direct them to the welcome page or to the index page. And then from there, the user can make different choices. And then we can introduce the concept of REST services, RESTful calls, representational state transfers, where we can see it here in action on this um, browser. We have oracle.com slash tech network slash middleware slash fusion middleware downloads and then so on. So if we click something else or if we click a different link, it goes back, it fetches data and then throws everything on the front end here. We'll cover this a lot more in depth later on. But for now we want to download this and what we want to do is click accept license agreement. Or actually before we do this, don't select an option from here. Navigate to where you can see this page. Uh, the URL to all of these pages is available down in the description of this video. And what we want to do is click see all free web logic server for developer downloads. Once we click on this, we're going to be taken to another page. And then from there, click accept license agreement. Make sure that you have an Oracle account. And then down here, we want to select Windows x86 with 32-bit JVM installs with Oracle WebLogic Server, Oracle Coherence, and Oracle Enterprise Pack for Eclipse. I like this package the most. Not everybody likes this uh, because it's pretty heavy. It's 1.8 gigabytes, and it comes with stuff that we're not going to use right away, uh, and it comes with some stuff that we might never use. The beauty of this is that we get two for the price of one. Remember when I mentioned Eclipse? Well, Oracle Enterprise Pack for Eclipse comes with Eclipse pre-configured with a lot of plugins. We're going to add some of our own plugins later on when we configure our environments. And we're going to add the same plugins to both Eclipse, which is another integrated open environment, and to IntelliJ. But we don't have to do anything after we install this package. We're going to have WebLogic and then we're going to have Eclipse. And all we have to do is double click on the executable and it'll open up for us and do everything we need it to. Actually, I'm going to use Eclipse to show you how to start WebLogic. It's possible to do it in many different ways. So once you install WebLogic, we'll have to configure it. And we'll cover that in the next video. But there's different versions. There's 10.3.6 if you're supporting you know, legacy applications or uh, applications that are a bit older that have uh, dependency on this specific version. We don't have any such dependencies. We're free to play around with the latest versions and explore in that direction. So we can grab the 12.1.2 WebLogic server. And then I mentioned another thing that we want to get is Oracle SQL Developer the latest version and of course have an Oracle account and then accept the license agreement and the downloads will become available for you. If you already have a JDK, a Java development kit, you can skip this and get the Windows 32 64-bit installation. It's a little smaller or you can grab the Windows 64-bit with a JDK. It doesn't really matter. It comes pre-configured and what's going to happen is once you download this, it's going to come as a zip and once you unzip it, inside that folder is going to be 
um, or inside that zip file is going to be a folder. You can extract that folder anywhere. I extract it directly under my C directory. And then from there, we can make, let me show you this real quick, down here. This is the icon for Oracle SQL Developer. And if I right click, and this is a trick for adding icons on your desktop. Uh, Windows 8 uh, is a bit strange without the start menu and all that. So we can right click on this and then right click again and then properties. And then we can see that I've extracted it in C, in my C directory. We can open the file location. And then this is everything that comes in, right? Our JDK already installed with a readme. And then down here, SQL developer exe. We don't have to install anything. We don't have to do anything. As soon as we extract the, f the folder, we can double click on this and it'll run for us. Of course, what I like to do is right click it and then pin taskbar and then create a shortcut. On to Git for Windows and GitHub. So before we can use GitHub, we need to use Git for Windows. You can download this. First, I recommend you take a look at some of the features of this tool, how to use the git bash command. If you're a Linux user, you should be somewhat familiar with this. Uh, for Windows users, there is a GUI. I find it pretty useful. Shell integration, and then uh, you can take a look at the repository, the wiki, and then grab the download, and then install it. Just um, in the next video, we'll cover the installation and the configuration for these tools. And then later we'll learn how to um, create repositories, push to GitHub online. And don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to screw up. I know a lot of people say, well, what if I make a mistake or you know, ruin my, my version history? We're just playing around here and making sure that we want to um, establish a level of comfort with the tool, right? And the only way to do that is to make mistakes. So actually play around and force yourself to make mistakes and then figure out how to recover from that. So what happens if you mess up your version history or delete your repository or you know things like that. Uh, make mistakes here so that you don't make them down the road. And then we can figure out how to troubleshoot, how to dig ourselves out of certain situations. And we'll see that a few videos down the road where what happens if we delete our repository on GitHub, how can we push back to it from IntelliJ. On GitHub, create a profile, create an account, and you can create a repository, play around with it, um, read more about the commands, um, look at the, the help files, take a look at some projects that are in existence. This is the repository that we're going to be using or taking a look at on the sample project that I will provide in the next uh, few videos. And of course, links to everything that we're covering here are available down below in the description. And now on to Maven, the last step. There are installation instructions down here for Windows. If you scroll down a little bit, you know, unzip the distribution archive, and then we're going to have to edit our system and environmental variables. We'll cover this more in depth. For now, just grab the Maven 3.2.3 um, downloadable, the current stable version of Maven, and ignore the checksum or the signature or any of that just get the binary zip. Now, if you see the binary tar.gz, that's a Linux thing. It's basically the equivalent of a zip. Since we're on Windows or I'm on Windows, just grab the Apache Maven 3.2.3 bin zip. And what we want to do with this for now is simply drop it. Let me open my folder here. Simply drop it in C, right? As you can see, the first folder I have here is Apache Maven. And we can double click on here, look at the readme, let me bring this in here, um, write some gibberish, you know, read through this, take a look at um, how it works. In the next video, we'll cover how to configure it. Um, the settings file, that will cover as well um, for authentication, user permission. If you're using something like Artifactory, Artifactory is a different beast and we'll cover that several videos down the road. One tool that should get a mention is the noteworthy Firebug for Firefox. Firefox is a fine browser and it has a lot of tools and plugins that are helpful. For example, up here, download helper and firebug. So we're going to use this tool when we're debugging JavaScript or CSS and we're trying to find difficult to narrow down classes when we use cascading style sheet frameworks like Bootstrap. It makes it a lot more easier. We can set breakpoints on some things. 
we can filter in a lot of different ways. Chrome has a good set of developer tools, but I do like Firebug and what it does. And you can read more about what it does, this documentation, the release notes, and then more about what is Firebug, CSS and HTML development, JavaScript. We're actually going to focus on this in our early applications. We're going to narrow in and drill down on client side, front end applications. Folks, this brings us pretty close to the end of this video. Let's recap really quick. We want to grab IntelliJ IDEA with a student account. If we don't have that, not to worry. We have Eclipse, we have .NET, we have all sorts of uh, environments that we can download for free and use. But we can grab IntelliJ. It's a really powerful tool. I mean, you get what you paid for, and it's a professional grade tool. I really like it. Then we can get the browser plugin for a Chrome. You can, if you use a different browser, if you prefer a different browser, you can check for this plugin there. For example, for Firefox, make sure that you can see this screen, right? Activate your environment or development environment and make sure that you can get to the screen. And then in the next video coming soon, we'll take a look at how to configure everything from Maven to WebLogic, how to do automatic builds. There's some really cool features that I can't wait to show you on this tool. Then grab WebLogic and grab the 32-bit JVM, the, the biggest one, the 1.8 gigs. And that comes with everything. It comes with WebLogic, Oracle Coherence. We'll talk more about that later. Oracle Enterprise Pack for Eclipse with a lot of pre-configured plugins and we'll add some of our own. Then of course, SQL Developer. There will come a time where we'll add a database and a data source to our um, web application. And then this tool will come in handy. Git for Windows, so we can create local repositories and then push to GitHub. A GitHub account, so that we can accept pushes from Git on our Windows environment or if you're using a Linux environment. Maven for builds, so we can build your application. And then there's some more links down below where we can explore the concepts of WAR files and JAR files and different Java concepts. All right, folks. This brings us to the end of the video. Uh, thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time on an Ecology Designs production.